Heidi, bye. At TJ Maxx, you can afford to turn your closet into a place of endless expression with the quality, styles, and prices you love. Max, what makes you, you. If you have Graves' disease and blurry vision, you need clear answers. People with Graves could also get thyroid eye disease or TED, which may need a different doctor. Find a TED eye specialist at isitted.com. Can you imagine to be remembered like that? Tomorrow on ET, Colin Farrell on his return as the Penguin. It was three hours in the chair every morning. Okay, before we go, Robert De Niro, your guy, Austin Butler, and Snoop Dogg hung out over the holiday. No, this is not an April Fool's joke. It actually happened. You didn't know I had a tag in him up there, huh? I knew. <laughs> Snoop's son, Champ, posted the photos and video with the caption, D Happening now. Shots fired from the street hit and kill a man inside a home. I'll tell you why neighbors believe he may not have been the intended target. April may not be the month you think of blockbuster sales, but we found some for you. Coming up, deals on vacuums, backyard tools, and a new grill. On the lookout for thunderstorms in the hours ahead, an updated timeline, future cast, an area of highest potential for severe storms in just a bit. News at 5 starts right now. Today is April 1st and there are overcast skies, but those clouds aren't fooling around. Some areas could possibly see some severe weather this evening. Adam Kasky has been tracking the potential development where this weather could pop off, how intense it could be. Adam. Nothing on the radar screen right now. We're not expecting anything for a few more hours. We're expecting the development in parts of the hill country where we're starting to see a few light showers start to develop, but that's it right now. Sprinkles in the hill country and then that action should develop and push towards San Antonio in the coming hour. So you look at just the rain chances hour by hour through eight o'clock. It's only 20%, but by nine o'clock we're at 30% and then we're scattered at 40% 10 and 11 PM before those storm chances really fall off around and after midnight tonight. So storms developing, especially in the hill country at eight o'clock, somewhere between eight and 11, we could see them around parts of San Antonio and surrounding areas. And then by midnight, the action pushes out and it pretty much comes to an end. Then check out the temperatures where we've had a lot of sunshine Del Rio. 96 right now in Warren's backyard. They actually officially had a record high today of 99 at the airport in Del Rio. Floresville, Panna Maria, 87, 83 in Bolverde and Maiko and Lavernia at 88 degrees. You can tell just by looking at the temperatures who's had a little more sunshine out there than others that have had the clouds. I'll be back with the latest future cast with the timing of those storms, the primary threats and where we're most likely to see severe storms in just a bit. We have some breaking news to tell you about. It's coming out of the city of Uvalde. Yeah, surprising developments. The newly elected Uvalde mayor Cody Smith resigning from his position effective immediately. In a statement from the city of Uvalde, Smith cites unexpected medical issues. He just won the mayoral seat in November, beating the mother of Rob Elementary victim Kimberly Rubio in that race. Mayor Pro Tem Everardo Zamora will take over the mayor's role until the next election in November. Again, just into our newsroom, the newly elected Uvalde Mayor Cody Smith resigning effective immediately. Let's check out traffic right now. Let's go to I-35 at Benton City Road. You may wonder, why are we showing this? There's nothing happening. It's all smooth here. Well, that wasn't the case earlier after a crane on a TxDOT bucket truck fell on top of an SUV that was on I-35 near Von Orme. The two women inside lucky to be alive, walking away reportedly with only minor injuries in all this. Can you imagine an unreal shock for those ladies and other drivers on the interstate? A crane just dropping right on top of them, not to mention the 60-year-old worker who was operating the truck at the time. Well, unlike this picture, gridlock started around 11 o'clock this morning when that TxDOT bucket parked in a grassy median on Benton City Road on I-35 on the southwest side. The truck operator was trying to adjust the bucket. The crane came crashing down on the hood of the SUV. Von Army's police chief told us on the news at noon, live on the air, the difference between minor and life-threatening injuries may have been only a few seconds in time. Yeah, we're having a little trouble playing that video right now of the incident, but it did force TxDOT to divert traffic off of I-35 by exiting 141 
to go around the crash scene. Now, TxDOT actually releasing a statement on the incident about 2.30 this afternoon. In part, it reads that, quote, there was an incident involving a TxDOT box truck with a crane and a private vehicle on I-35 near Benton City Road. I-35's main lanes are expected to be closed for the next two to three hours for cleanup operations. This incident remains under investigation, end quote. That was 2.30 this afternoon as we showed you on that TransGuide camera, the main lanes of I-35 in that area now back open and traffic is moving. But boy, do those women have a story to tell tonight. Oh, yeah. New at 5, it seems home was no safe space for a local man. He was killed this morning, hit by shots fired into his home by someone in a car. Katrina Weber reports neighbors questioning whether he was the actual intended target. Before the crime scene tape went up around this home in the 1600 block of West French Place, neighbors knew something was wrong. San Antonio police say some people had reported gunshots in that area earlier. Then came this final call around 5 a.m. where someone was hit. She said she just heard bang, 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 but she thought literally somebody was banging on somebody's door. This neighbor who goes by the name Irma says her wife heard the shots a few doors down but dismissed them. Later, they realized things were serious. All the cop cars right here blocking in front of my house and stuff. So, and then I found out that some man got shot in the head. Police say a 61 year old man was coming home after taking his wife to work when someone in a black sedan or SUV took aim at him. He was able to run inside and warn others just before bullets pierced the home, hitting and killing him. You can tell from all those evidence markers that there were multiple shots fired. Police say anywhere from 10 to 15 rounds. According to police, there were three other people in the home, a 46 year old man and two children. They were not hurt. Irma believes the shooters may have been after someone other than the victim, perhaps in another house. He was an innocent bystander coming home from dropping off his wife, and it's sad. Detectives are still looking for any clues they can find. While police did receive those earlier calls about gunshots nearby, they say they don't know yet whether there's a connection to this murder. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Also arrested today, a 65-year-old man wanted for murder. San Antonio detectives say he shot and killed a man during an argument over a woman. Steve Rocco accused of shooting Daryl Bird multiple times, including in the head more than a week ago at an apartment on South Cross Boulevard off of WW White Road. According to police, a witness says Rocco entered that apartment and began arguing with the victim. They say Rocco was upset that Bird took a woman out for the night. He told Bird he wasn't afraid to use the gun. He has before. After allegedly shooting Bird, Rocco took off. He was arrested yesterday. A triple car fire at a local home being investigated by arson investigators now. San Antonio fire crews called out to this home in the 2400 block of Greencrest Drive, not too far from Vance Jackson Road around 2 a.m. When they got there, two cars in the driveway were on fire, plus a truck in the driveway next door. We're told San Antonio police had been called out to the home earlier for some type of disturbance. Arson investigators are looking into that incident. Bear County Sheriff's deputies, victims of a crime right in the heart of their own place of business and surveillance cameras caught it on camera. Take a look at this guy. He apparently is a bike bandit ripping off a patrol bicycle. Deputies are hoping you can help them identify him and find him. The video was taken downtown at the Justice Center itself. Deputies say the suspect is seen entering a restricted area and stealing a patrol bike. If you know who he is, you're being asked to call the Bear County Sheriff's Office. The number on the screen, 210-335-6000. You may have noticed a few city offices and local college campuses closed down today. That's because today is Cesar Chavez Day. Many here in San Antonio are reflecting on the work and legacy of the late labor and civil rights activists. Chavez, a fierce advocate of farm workers whose devotion to securing better wages and improved safety led to collective bargaining for farm workers. In addition to the city, San Antonio College and Alamo College District offices were closed today. More than a week ago, hundreds here in San Antonio took part in the 28th annual March for Justice on the city's west side. Think about it. 
This time next Monday, we'll be on the other side of a historic event. The solar eclipse just one week away, and now is the time to figure out where you're going to be if you haven't already. You really should have already. Yeah, the excitement is going to swell up the population in San Antonio and the surrounding areas into the hill country, and we've got questions. You've got questions. We've also got answers now. Your eclipse authority has them. Just scan the QR code right here and you will immediately access everything you need to know from where you need to go and where to get some free eclipse glasses as well. Yeah, and happening this Wednesday, the KSAT weather team giving you more starting at 7 o'clock. We're going to live stream our eclipse special that you can watch on all of our platforms. So many questions about what's going to happen this time next week. Oh, and the forecast. Yeah, good point out. Will there be clouds in the air? Adam will tell us coming up. It's a race to reopen the busiest port in the U.S. and to clean up the water at the Port of Baltimore. Days after that bridge collapse there, a temporary channel is now open, but only for small boats working on the cleanup. ABC's Perry Russell has more on the reopening and how the channel will widen over time to help with the flow of marine traffic in and out of Baltimore's port. Today, the first sign of the Port of Baltimore slowly reopening. A small ship passing through a new temporary channel, first meant for boats working on the cleanup, later for commercially essential ships. We have to move fast, but we cannot be careless. It's still not clear when this complex, delicate cleanup will be finished. We're going to do everything that we can uh, to get the port open as soon as possible, obviously uh, to build that bridge as, as soon as possible. The timeline is going to be complicated. Over the weekend, blowtorches slicing through steel, workers removing a piece of the bridge weighing 200 tons. Yeah, yeah. The Coast Guard dropping channel markers in the water, marking the path of that temporary channel that will ease the backup of ships stuck in port. Adding to the cleanup complexity, a natural gas pipeline runs underneath the crash site pressure in the pipeline has been reduced as crews work above. It's not just that you have to remove the wreckage, it's that you have to do it in a way that doesn't cause portions of the bridge that are that are there across the water to shift. Uh, they've been under a lot of compression and tension. Uh, they could behave almost like a spring if they are not expertly managed. Both cargo and passenger ships are being rerouted to other ports, including this Carnival cruise ship. Carnival was simply looking for a safe Port of Harbor. Scheduled to dock in Baltimore, the ship was diverted to Norfolk, Virginia. Passengers put on buses for a four hour ride north. Thanks for the good folks in Norfolk for getting us home. President Biden will be in Baltimore on Friday to visit the site. The White House still says the federal government will pay to rebuild the bridge. Still not clear what that funding will look like. Perry Russell, ABC News, Washington. Straight ahead, spring in full swing, and the outdoors are calling. We're going down the list of items you can get a good deal on this month to make your backyard barbecues and garden party dreams come true. I'm Myra Arthur here in the newsroom, and here's what we're working on for the news at 6 o'clock. When you think solar eclipse, you don't think this the need for more blood donations. But as thousands of people head to the Hill Country to catch the eclipse, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is gearing up for an increased need just in case. How they're hoping to provide that when they're already dealing with a low inventory. All that and more today on the News at 6. See you then. Thank you, Mara. April may not be a month for door busting holiday sales, but you can still find some pretty good bargains. Yeah, think practical stuff like spring cleaning, yard work, maybe backyard grills. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz shows us the deals out there. It's the season for sprucing up, cooking out, and cleaning up on spring deals. Cleaning products are an excellent place to start this month as retailers often lower their prices on items like vacuums to stay competitive during the spring cleaning season. Consumer Reports found some smart buys like this robotic vacuum and mop from Cority. It's $50 off at Cority. The R750 Pro model got very good scores in Consumer Reports tests. For a deeper clean, consider a carpet cleaner. The Hoover PowerDash Pet Advanced Carpet Cleaner is on sale for $140 at Target. To kick off the warmer months, retailers tend to offer discounts on seasonal items, so it's a great time to shop, especially if you want to spruce up your yard. 
This battery-powered mower from Cobalt is down to $399 at Lowe's. Your neighbors will thank you because this one is quiet. And something else to help with your curb appeal, this battery-powered string trimmer from Toro is reduced to $149.99 at Amazon. It's one of CR's top-rated battery string trimmers. Now that the chores are done, it's also the perfect time of year to get out in the backyard and do some grilling. This large gas grill from Monument Grills is on sale for $729 at Amazon. It's one of the highest scoring gas grills in Consumer Reports ratings. And it makes a mean burger. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Mmm, burgers. Yeah, definitely getting close to dinner time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 86 degrees out there. I, now, I know there's some concern about severe weather tonight, Adam. Yeah, there is, and it's in the hours ahead. Really not until we get closer to 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock through 1 a.m. So 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. is the time frame. Anything outdoors between now and then, you know, swim practice, baseball practice, baseball game, whatever, you're going to be okay. It's come 8 o'clock. You really need to have an extra eye and ear to the sky and then thereafter into the night. So let's talk about our primary threats from the storms that are likely to develop as usual around here. Isolated areas, localized large hail. That's our primary threat, but we could also have some wind gusts up to 60, maybe even 65 miles per hour. Flooding and tornadic risks. They're there, but they're really on the low end. Here's the big picture. Here's what's happening. Big dip in the upper level flow over the desert southwest. It's throwing some energy our way. You see the snow in New Mexico. Showers and storms already coming together in parts of Texas. This is all to the north of us right now, but you see in the final few frames, by 3, 4, 5 o'clock, these storms developing between San Angelo and Dallas. And we are expecting further development southward in the hours ahead. And that would first start in the hill country, in our neck of the woods. And especially then as we get to 8, 9 o'clock, push further, farther to the east. And then 9, 10 o'clock, closer to San Antonio. Now, with our future cast, don't really hone in on the exact locations of these storms. This could be anywhere in it within the area you see on the screen here. So think of it as just a good representation of the amount of coverage we're going to have in our area, not the specific location. So about 40% of us will be uh, getting some of those showers and storms at any time uh, this evening and into tonight. And then the activity really quiets down. The severe weather threat on a scale of one to five, five being a Guarantee big severe weather outlook. We don't have a five, but we are at a two. We're in the scattered category here, stretching northward, but you get into Oklahoma and it's a classic spring situation there with a much, much higher threat of organized widespread severe weather. Notice how San Antonio is kind of on the tail end of it, but not out of the woods. So most of the activity will be to our north, but I still think a few severe storms are quite possible later on this evening. There's that 40% chance tonight and then behind a cold front we will have bright sunshine, cooler than average conditions as we get through the well, Tuesday all the way to Friday, the middle and end of the week. And then rain chances creep back in for Sunday morning at 30% and even for the eclipse day, we have it at 20%. More on that in a little bit and again at six. Want to talk about this, so get you ready. Dew points are up. Very humid out. Dew points right now around 70, very sticky, but the cold front moves in later this evening, sweeps away that humidity, and that's going to set the stage for a little bit more of a fall-like feel to the air again for the days ahead. So dew points way down, very dry air in place. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Saturday, we see a little blip of humidity back. That'll lead to some morning fog and drizzle, and then it gets pushed away again for Sunday. And that's going to lead to some cooler mornings. Have the jackets ready to go Wednesday and Thursday at the bus stop, 48 degrees. That's well below the average of 55 for this time of year. Tomorrow we start the day at 58, lower humidity, sunny all day, just a bit breezy. Northwest wind at 15 to 25, and we go from 58 in the morning to 80 degrees in the afternoon with sunshine. We have those upper 40s Wednesday and Thursday. The afternoons will be in the upper 70s, so that's going to feel nice outside. And then you see the temperatures get back into the low 80s on Friday. I want to point out Monday, Eclipse Day, April 8th. Right now, we are expecting some clouds in the sky. The exact extent of the cloud cover is still highly uncertain. Even that 20% chance of storms, highly uncertain. I'll get into why coming up at 6.
Thank you so much, Adam. All right, the Spurs were down a few players last night, but they gave it a game. Yeah, so they had 50 points per game on average sitting on the bench against yeah. the Golden State Warriors, and they still almost pulled it off, taking it down to the very end. And Victor Wimbanyama is certainly happy with how the team played. And in women's college basketball tonight, it's LSU and Iowa, meaning Angel and Caitlin coming up. Um, I've been playing Caitlin since we were in high school. I played her um, in my AAU championship when she played for all Iowa Tech. Uh, played her at Maryland, and then of course played her here at LSU. Yeah, I would say you know me and Angel have always been great competitors. Obviously, she played in the Big Ten for a while to begin her career, and that's what makes women's basketball so fun. Is you know you have great competition, and that's what we've had all year long. Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese will continue their on-court robbery tonight in Big Board Sports. All right, Steph Curry and the Warriors beat Wimby and the Spurs 117-113 yesterday, preventing the Spurs from their first four-game winning streak this season. The Spurs played without Devin, Keldon, Jeremy, and Dom Barlow due to injuries, and they still nearly won the game. You know, I had to, yeah, but, and pass the ball even more, you know, work for open shots even more, and, uh, yeah, play hard, you know, execute. The Nuggets will host the Spurs tomorrow night at 8 at Ball Arena. Okay, tonight is must-watch TV when number one Iowa takes on number three LSU in the Women's Elite Eight. That means Iowa guard Caitlin Clark and LSU forward Angel Reese will continue their basketball rivalry. Their showdown in the national championship game last season, won by the Tigers, certainly captured the nation's attention. I don't think people realize, like, it's not personal. Like, once we get out between those lines, like, I, if I see you walking down the street, like it's hey girl, like what's up? Let's 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 hang out. Like, I think people just take it like we hate each other. Like me and Caitlin Clark don't hate each other. <laughs> like I want everybody to understand that. There's definitely that competitive fire. You know, both of us want to win more than anything, and that's how it should be when you're a competitor and you get into a situation like this. You know, whether it was the national championship, whether it's Elite Eight, that goes for. LSU's entire roster, that goes for Iowa's entire roster. Every single one of us want this so bad. But like when I get between those lines, like we're not we're not friends, we're not buddies. I'm gonna talk trash to you, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get in your head the whole entire game. But after the game we can kick it. Like I don't think people really realize that. We want to advance to the final four so bad, so I think that's the main similarity is how bad and how competitive we are and you know we both grew up loving this game and we're gonna do anything we can to help our teams win. Ah, uh, should be a good one. LSU and Iowa play tonight at 6 in Albany, New York. And the second game tonight is another 1-3 matchup featuring UConn and USC, 8 p.m. in Portland. I just love that the women's game getting all this attention. Me, For too. whatever reason. It's fantastic. It's exciting. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, Especially man. when LSU's involved. How did I know you were going to say that? <laughs> we'll be right back. And I will personally see you there tomorrow. All right. I was Nortenu, you. yes, giving away some glasses. Hey, I know you've seen a lot out there, and there's likely to be some cloud cover for the eclipse on Monday, but the exact extent, extent of that cloud cover is still very uncertain. These, the type of spring-like weather pattern we're in right now, is highly uncertain and volatile and is likely to change many ele elements of it leading up to eclipse day. Don't throw in the towel just yet, folks, okay? We'll keep All you updated. Right. <laughs> we're not gonna. We're not gonna miss this. No. Thanks for watching. See you at six.